In 81, when Reagan ordered you back to work, you were president of the union local you steered with your working man's voice, the voice that ground the Ptolemaic ballet of air traffic to a temporary stop. You crossed the picket line I walked with you outside Newark International. I could see the dark turnpike for miles, the somber office buildings winking insomniac cells, the tarmac spread before us like a picnic blanket, and you, like a jade Buddha, suffused in the glow of that radial EKG. You'd push the microphone in front of me, nod, and let me give the word. I called all my stars home, trajectories bent on the weight of my voice. You say you miss tracking those leviathans, each one snagged on the barb of your liturgy. I too get reeled in by the hard, now rusty music of your pipes. I follow it back to the day of your accident and the story you tell. You were 16, hurtling the railings dividing row house porches from one end of Widener Place to the other to impress Mom. I imagine the way you cleared each one, like a leaf bobbing on water, catching the penultimate, the rubber toe of your Chuck Taylors kissed by the rail, upsetting your rhythm, and you roiled in the air, headlong, arms outstretched, reckless toward the last, like one hell-bent or sick to the stomach. The way you landed, on your throat, the rail could have taken your head clean off. Since then, your voice issues like some wartime communique, a ragged, typewritten dispatch which you swallow with your smoker's cough, black as a tire, spinning in the snow. That winter, after the strike, we were so poor, you sold everything but the house. Tell me, Dad, when you'd stand at the door calling me in for the night, could you hear me out there speaking to snowflakes falling beneath the lamppost? Could you hear me out there imitating you, imitating prayer? <laughs>